Thanks for watching the screencast all about solving inequalities in one variable, which is our objective for the screencast. Learners will be able to solve multi-step linear inequalities in one variable. This is a task that you've worked on in the past. This is a significant part of Algebra 1, I recall. But in case you've forgotten or in case you haven't worked much with inequalities lately, let's remind you of some of the properties of inequality. Now, this table looks really uh, intimidating, probably. This is from your textbook. It uh, provides the addition and subtraction properties for inequalities. You know, in uh, Learning Target 1, we gave you these properties for equalities. And all this is saying is that those same properties that worked for adding and subtracting uh, from either side of a true equation are also true for true inequalities. If A happens to be less than B, if I take the real number C and add it to both sides, or subtract it from both sides, then I will maintain that inequality. And the same is true for a, a, a greater than situation. If A is greater than B, then A plus C is greater than B plus C. And then A minus C is still greater than B minus C. And it's worth pointing out that those also work for the inclusive uh, less than or equal to and greater than or equal to cases as well. It just would have been a lot of cases to type out here uh, on the screen, you know. And we have the multiplication and division properties for inequalities as well. And these are also pretty intuitive. I do want to point out something important here. If you see where the red, uh, if C is negative, that's an important thing to talk about real quick. Okay. Uh, for any real numbers A, B, and C, if C is a positive number, if you multiply both sides of a true inequality by that number, that inequality maintains itself. If A is greater than B, and C is positive, then A times C is bigger than B times C, and it's also true for A divided by C and B divided by C. But if C is a negative number, if, I, if I'm multiplying or dividing by a negative number, notice the, the red uh, signs here to indicate that change. The inequality changes, and I can demonstrate that for you here. Uh, I know for a fact that 3 is greater than uh, 2, for example. But what if I were to take those same numbers and multiply them by, let's say, negative 1? If I multiply both sides by a negative number, what I get is negative 3 and negative 2. And it's no longer true. I can no longer put greater than here. That's actually not the case. Uh, it's not true that negative 3 is greater than negative 2. It's the other way around. Okay. In this case, the inequality changes. So on the next slide here, I want to show you the way that I generally think about what you just saw, okay? The same steps I use to solve equations can be used to solve inequalities too, but I must remember that multiplying or dividing by a negative number flips the inequality sign. I imagine you got pretty good at that uh, task in Algebra 1. This is probably just a review. So let's try a couple together and uh, see what we can do here. So solve the inequality. Uh, an important thing to point out here is that the instructions say to write your answer in interval notation, the thing we saw in the previous screencast. Okay, to solve this inequality, I suppose, just like with equations, I need to get all my x terms on one side and all my numerical terms on the other side. Maybe I'll start by looking at my 9x and my 6x and say maybe I should subtract 6x from each side. This step itself may not be necessarily need to be shown, but it's important that you're able to explain uh, how you did what you did. So I've got 3x minus 11 is greater than still that addition property of inequality so that the sign won't change if you add or subtract something from both sides of an inequality. I can do a similar move to get my uh, number terms all on the right side if I add 11 to both sides. Now these are, oh, I should have crossed these out before, these are opposites now, and what I have is 3x is greater than negative 9 plus 11 is 2. And now I can use that division property of inequality, and if I need to isolate x, I'll divide both sides by 3. Since 3 is a positive number, I will maintain the inequality. I will still have a greater than situation, and I've got 2 thirds. And that's my answer, but that's not the answer in interval notation. So if you recall from the previous screencast, the way I need to say an answer for x is greater than 2 thirds is to say, well, I need an inequality that starts at 2 thirds and approaches positive infinity. 
And since it doesn't include two-thirds, I need the round bracket here. Infinity, as you saw previously, always gets the round bracket. So how about an answer like two-thirds to positive infinity? Okay, here's another example. It says solve the inequality 18 is less than or equal to negative 3 times the quantity 4w minus 1. I want to suggest maybe that you think about doing something here that might not be your instinct. Um, your instinct might be to think about using the distributive property here, and it works. I'm not saying you can't do it. Uh, it absolutely will work. Let me suggest to an Algebra 2 Honors student that maybe you think about trying something else. Something that will save you a little bit of time. I've noticed that negative 3 would divide pretty nicely into 18. Let me choose to do that first. Let me choose to divide both sides of this equation by negative 3. If this were a different number, if this were a number over here that didn't divide, that, uh, that negative 3 didn't divide nicely into, I probably wouldn't consider doing this first. But I happened to notice this was true. I kind of like the idea of doing this. So 18 divided by negative 3 is negative 6. In this right side of the inequality, the negative 3s will cancel, and I simply have 4w minus 1. And what I hope you picked up on was that I choose now to divide both sides by a negative number. Our inequality property says that that inequality should flip. So since I divided by the negative 3, I need to make this a greater than or equal to. And now I can kind of carry on uh, as you probably would. I'll add 1 to both sides. I've got negative 5 is greater than or equal to 4w. Just pull it over here just to have room to work on it. Negative 5 is greater than or equal to 4w. If I now divide both sides of the inequality by 4, which would be the way to isolate w, I'll get negative 5 fourths is greater than or equal to w. I didn't have to flip the inequality here because I divided by a positive number. Now something I want to point out to you, and it wasn't on the properties that were shown, uh, is that it might be helpful to in writing this in interval notation to rewrite this inequality with the variable on the left side. Uh, so what's important for you to know is that if I do that, my inequality is, of course, going to change direction. So if negative 5 fourths is greater than or equal to W, W itself would be less than or equal to negative 5 fourths. And that really helps me to write the inequality notation uh, this way, because I think that makes the interval notation easier. Now I need all the things that are less than or equal to negative 5 fourths. I need, starting with negative infinity, up to negative 5 fourths, and including negative 5 fourths with the square bracket. All right, this one's for you. Uh, pause the video on scratch paper off to the side. See if you can solve this inequality. See if you can write the answer in interval notation. And when you've got it worked out, hit play and we'll check it out. All right, let's see. Uh, you know, in the previous example, we thought about dividing by 9 first, but the only reason that made a lot of sense to me was that we had just this kind of term uh, compared an inequality to a real number. I think dividing everything here by 9 would make a mess. I'd get like a 7 ninths term here and a 4 ninths. I don't want to mess around with that. What I think I want to do maybe is go ahead and this time do that distributive property. So 9 times 2r would be 18r. 9 times negative 5 is negative 45. And we'll keep every other term the same. It's not the only first step option you've got. Um, I see some like terms here that might be worth combining. Uh, on the left side of the inequality, negative 45 minus 3 would be negative 48. And now I'm in a pretty familiar situation. I need to isolate my R's and my real numbers. Uh, I've got a 7R here, an 18R here. Let me subtract 7R from both sides. To remain 11R minus 48 is less than negative 4. If I now decide that I'm going to add 48 to both sides, these cancel. And I've got 11r is less than negative 4 plus 48 is positive 44. 
And I know what to do now. I can divide both sides of the inequality by positive 11. Since I divided by positive 11, I don't need to change the inequality sign. But I know that r has to be less than 11. And to write that in interval notation, if r is less than 11, then I need all the things from negative infinity up to, but not including, positive 11. And there we have it. Thanks for watching.